Schmudo. Hello, everyone. This is the Schmodown Rundown, the only show that matters. I am Frank Janish, with, here with Steph Zabra. And uh, we're talking about Friday Night Titans. And uh, some stuff went down. You know, we had a couple matches, Steph. But then we had um, a contract. Drama! Yeah. Drama! We're, we're, we're going to talk about that stuff. But uh, hi, how you been? How you been? Good. Uh, yeah, Frank and I were both at Star Wars Celebration. And Brad held down the fort. And then Brad literally texted us seconds before we started. And he was like, I don't like you guys. And I don't like the rundown. And I don't even like the showdown, and I'm not coming. And we're like, yeah. wow, it's like that? Yeah. So uh, he was like, I quit. And I was like, no, you don't quit. I fire you. So Yeah, so that was a I, good one. Yeah, that's what I did. And then he was like, really? And then I just deleted his number. So. We'll and then I replied with a gif of someone dropping the mic. That's right. It was a classic. Classic move. Yeah. You, you always got hit so... with the drop, drop the mic. But yeah, yeah, Star Wars Celebration. We were at Star Wars Celebration. Uh, I saw you for like ten seconds, uh, was which so was happy. great. It was great. It was great. Great ten seconds. And um, but I had a I had a really great time meeting everybody or seeing everybody at Star Wars Celebration. The entire like Star Wars division yeah. was there pretty much. Like ninety percent of them was there. So that was great. Um, you run in run into any Schmodown fans out there, stuff? Oh yeah, a ton of Schmodown fans. Thank y'all for saying hi. It's like it's the worst when like people comment or message after, and we're like, "I saw you, but was too <laughs> nervous. What are you nervous for?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm and sometimes, a... yeah, some, yeah. Sometimes that happens, and I'm like, I, I understand. I understand because I could be the same way too. I don't like going up to people because I always feel like I'm bothering them. Like there might be, you know, walking somewhere, and if I go up, like, "Hey, how you doing?" You know, whether. But conventions are the place to do it because it's like i'm walking we're walking we're hanging out like everyone's friends we're t we're all here talking about star wars so but i get it i get it i get it yeah. but yes it was yeah. awesome the schmodown fans rock so it was so cool and like like you said like the whole star wars division was there so it was great to see evan bushkar and yeah um, gold Damon leader we, we, and we, evan is gold leader it's gold, gold leader. leader i love Don't, gold leader yeah he's great yeah, I hung out a lot with the Di Melantas. We stood around a lot. That's what we did. We like out front. We just kind of like stood around a lot, and we we're like, "Where's everybody at?" And like, "Oh, they'll be coming over here." I'm like, "Okay, cool, cool." Um, and then just stood around. But then like, you saw everybody's cosplay, which was just amazing. A lot of different, so good, incredible. Yeah, yeah. This has turned it into a celebration recap, but which is not yeah. what we're here to do. Um, but also, real quick, I don't know. Did you have a chance to see Top Gun Maverick yet? Oh like, my god! Oh, you already did. You already did. But like, did you see it again? That's what I meant. Did you have you seen it again in the theater? So so funny. Uh, Roxy Stryer and I yesterday were we just had a really long work day, and we got in the and we were. I was like, we need. We've just received a mission from the universe. She's like, what is it? I'm like, we need bazookies from BJ's. This is this is our mission. This is why we're here on Earth. So we got in the car. <laughs> Rolled down the windows like we were piloting a really important aircraft. Blasted the Top Gun soundtrack, which is like Hell all yeah. songs I actually don't really care about. But because I like this movie, love this movie so much, blasted it on the way to Pazookies. And it was just like, I feel like a, a patriot in this moment. Wait, did you so. play the Maverick soundtrack or the original soundtrack? Maverick. And then okay. we were almost going to – and then we were like, should we see it again? And then there was no other times because it was so late. Hmm. But I'm going to see it a second time. Have you seen it twice? Yeah, I saw it. I went to see it at the Chinese IMAX and blew my mind away. Because the first time I saw it was an advanced screen. It was kind of on a normal screen. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I, I knew I had to go see this in the IMAX and I had to go see in the best one that I, that I feel like is like the best one around here. And that's at the Chinese. And it was really cool. It was really cool. Sounded great. Looked great. I mean, I was in heaven and my crowd, the crowd I was with was phenomenal. I mean, just super gung ho about it. Big Top Gun fans. Uh, so I had a great time in the theater watching this movie. And apparently a lot of people did too, because that broke like Memorial Day weekend records and stuff like that and um so uh, i'm look i'm gonna see it a third time stuff Let's yeah see. got yeah. to got to yeah. yeah all right so all that out of the way um yeah. we can get into what happened friday night titans and we had as the undercard it was pure energy and the next chapter and the main event 
was the movement versus the system. Now, Pure Energy, that's Rick Hong and Beth May. Next chapter is Moose Haas and Rachel Silvestrini. Uh, but before we got into the match, we had a, we had a bit of an interesting scene to start off the episode with Andrew Guy and Ben Bateman. Andrew Guy is, goes up to Ben and he's like, what are you doing? This is, you're doing the exact opposite of what I, you know, what, what I think you should be doing is building up players. You don't, we don't need to build up Dan Merle, right? And, and Bateman just was like not having any of it. He's like, you don't know anything. You put me through a table. You know, what are, who are you to you know, say and give me orders? And really, I think Ben Bateman was kind of like in this delusional mindset of taking orders and we haven't turned a page. You put me through a table. It's like, I let you guys bury the hatch and all that. You guys played a team match together. Uh, Steph, what did you think about, you know, what, how Ben was reacting to Andrew Guy here? Because it was a very, I know it took me by surprise. It was so mean. Yeah. <laughs> it was so mean. Like these guys are actually friends you know they do shows together they've been on teams together guy came back to do a match with him they give shared advice with one another and it was just like th- literally quite literally thrown in guy's face and i think he was being like trying to be genuinely like a good friend and it's not like he was saying stuff to get a leg up or it was like selfishly said advice i think it was very mutual mutually beneficial advice and ben was just like (laughs) no yeah that's not happening and and then when he got ganged up on with like the whole squad rolls up and just dan goes after him too and i was just like damn like this he went he went hard dan's going like he's not holding back at all i was like and like it breaks my heart but I'm kind of liking it, but yeah. only from Dan. I don't like when Ben does it. I don't like when Ben does it. I don't. I don't like that. But when Dan does it, I guess. It's, I guess it's because I've seen Ben do this before. I've seen this before. But when Dan does it, there's actually like some truth to it. I think in there a little bit at least. And so when Dan's going after, but Dan you know, comes Gatt, in with yeah. the deep cuts. Yes, Dan absolutely. has like deep cutting things to say where. I just am like, I'm glad I'm not on the receiving end of this. <laughs> First of all, I mean, just a scathing remark that he, as soon as he enters the room, he goes like, oh, look at this, out with the old, in with the new. And I was like, damn. Dan j- just went for the jugular right from the jump. Yeah. Um, to say Throw that punch. to Andrew Guy. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, whew. But you know what? Uh, and then at the end of this this interaction, uh, they were kind of, you know, getting on Andrew Guy and it kind of reminded me of uh, this one scene in Wedding Crashers when Will Ferrell's there, and uh, they're like talking. It's like the at the end of the movie <laughs> with like the funeral, and he's like, "What an idiot! What a loser!" I was like, "That's what it reminded me of," and I was like, "That's kind of funny to me," but at the same time, I'm like, "Andrew Guy is just, you know, he's trying to, you know, turn over a new leaf. We help Ben turn over a new leaf, and here comes Dan Merle." And so I was just. Very entertaining, very sad, very disappointing. But I, I, I guess I, in total, I liked it. I liked what I was watching, but at the same time, I just it's really entertaining. Yeah. And, but I hate to say that because I feel like I love Guy. Like he's great, you know, and he's so good on the desk. And it was cool that he came back for the match and all of this. And it's he doesn't need to talk back to these guys either. Like, I think he handled it really well. But there was a part of me where I was like, I can't believe how composed he is right now. Because if someone was in my face saying those things, knock if you buck. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for real. And, uh, you know, I want to talk about this other Bateman scene uh, that we got at the end of the episode. Before we get to that, I just want to mention – and uh, to say that we're going to have Paul Preston, the Paul Preston, a little bit later on in the episode. We talked to him. Uh, we're going to talk to him and see his thoughts on his match against the system that was Janine and the database. Um, but, okay, so we had Dan Murrow and Ben Bateman kind of ganging up on Andrew Guy. And then later at the end of the episode, uh, we see Ben Bateman, Kate Mulligan on one side of a table, Christian Harloff, the chairman, at the center, or at the head of a table. And then on the other side, we have Mike Kalinowski and Shannon Barney. And they're signing on the contract 
for for this upcoming match they're going to have. And I know what everyone's thinking. I know what everyone's thinking. But why are they signing a contract? Well, folks, for every match, there's a contract signing. We just don't show them all the time because they don't always all go down like this. Uh, ben Bateman kind of trying to get – not kind of. It's definitely trying to get under the skin of Mike Kalinowski. And a couple weeks ago, we referenced, or Dan Merle and Ben Bateman referenced, you know, trying to play games with Mike Kalinowski. I'm not a fan of playing games because I think you should just go out there and let your let your trivia do the talking. But he wants to engage in these games. And that's what he did here with Mike, Steph, when he goes, Shannon, you know, why don't you come and play with a real boss? And I was like, oh, boy. And Mike loses it. I mean, well, I mean, what are you thinking right now when when Bateman is kind of, you know, he's trying to agitate Mike by going at Shannon? Mike was like, <laughs> keep my wife's name <laughs> yeah. out of your mother. No. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, my I goodness. was like. When Ben started the setup, like, you know, you played, uh, he's played in a few, there's three divisions. In, yeah, yeah. Yeah, why don't you take a walk on the singles? If you ever want to go to the single side, yeah. hit me up. Whatever it was, I was like, sheesh. Oof, ah, I mean, oh, my, I like cannot believe how composed Shannon was. Yeah. Her. Come in front, like talking to me like that in front of my man. Like she handled it like such a boss. Mike, it's it's so hard to blame because he. I feel like he's had to be so composed. Like every time they've interacted, Shannon's been prepping him from this. We've seen it in past promos. She's like, he's gonna do this. You have to stay calm. Yeah. Promise me. Promise me. Promise forgotten. <laughs> Promise <laughs> forgotten. And, and, and look, Mike's had a rough year so far. I mean, he's lost yeah. the Intergiction belt. Lost a tough match against Shazam where corruption, him and Chance broke up, right? Marisol, you know, one of his uh, faction mates, lost a singles belt, right? Even though she did win free for all, but still loses a belt. You know, he's lost a belt. And now you got Ben Bateman coming in here, throwing these jabs at your lady. And it's like, what do you, what do you, there's only so far a man can go before he breaks. Yeah. And that's kind of a reference to Mission Impossible Fallout. That's not the exact quote. But it's close enough. It's something uh, like that. <sighs> yeah. And so I, I thought Bateman really just, you know, he smelt blood in the water is basically, you know, what with, with the year Mike's been having. And he goes right after Shannon. And and Mike lunges across the table, grabs him. And Bateman, all he can do is laugh. That's all he wants. All he's doing is laughing. Kate's laughing. And it's just like he reminds me of – of in that in that moment ben does he reminds me of someone that's like i can say whatever i want because i know physically you're not going to do anything more so i can just sit here and laugh at you because if you got any more physical um you know that would just be the dumbest thing on your part and christian even goes to ben at the end of kind of the, the altercation he's like hey look put your hands on you it's up to you if you want to kind of like press charges if you will we you know, we could suspend mike but bateman's like no I, I, I want to have this match. So it's like all these mind games that Ben's playing, you know, will it will it work or will it backfire on him, Steph? Yeah, I don't know because, you know, this isn't Mike's number one division. So it's not like the same ring that they're playing in. If this was an inner geekdom match, I think that he wouldn't have as much confidence coming at him. And I think that he – you should have the confidence he has going against Mike just because of what he's done in the singles division. Uh, in comparison, that doesn't mean that Mike can't do the same things. And I think Mike is so capable, but I, there is, of course he has more confidence. This is his division in a right. lot of ways. So I, 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 but he's getting exactly what he wants. So I'm curious to see how, what will actually happen when they show up to the match, what the vibe will be because Mike obviously has to be careful. He can't let his emotions get the best of him because I think we're seeing Mike play his best because he's not letting his emotions get the yeah. best of him. He's been so chill and happy and just having fun and it's working. Even though he's had bad things happen this season, he's playing great. Yeah, I think you said this a, a couple of weeks ago on the show, you know, Mike is playing so freely that it makes him a dangerous player um and i think ben recognizes that and he's gotta and he's gotta try and somehow disrupt that 
for Mike, and I'm curious to see how the vibes will be on match day. Uh, I only I feel like this is just a preview of of what's to come during the match because Ben, you know, I think you know Christian said it at the end of that at the end of the episode. He goes, "You went too far," and I and I think Ben probably thinks he didn't go too far. I think there's still more. I think he feels like there's more to go because that's just who Bateman is. Now, before we move on to um, this other more the, the other thing we got in this episode, which was more fun. But I will say, I kind of feel like, not feel like, I, I want to see eventually, if it all lines up somehow, that danger zone of Ben Bateman and Dan Merle, oh. you know, regardless of how the bateman Kalinowski match yeah. ends up, whatever the result, I would, love, I would love to see Kalinowski with whoever his teammate's going to be yeah. play against danger zone, if it, if it ever could line up. Because I think... That would, would be a be great curious. match. Yeah. yeah, that would be a great match, and I'd be curious to see how Bateman conducts himself because definitely that's an area that mike has dominated with chance you know as his team but you know it's yeah. won a couple belts and championships and whatnot um so i'm curious because it's a 1v1 bateman feels like he has the upper hand but when it comes to the team's division i wonder how ben would conduct himself you know even though he's got dan there with him which gives you a lot of confidence that you can go into any match and win it but Mike's no slouch when it comes to team play, obviously, and he's accomplished more in that division than Bateman ever has. So there yeah. is that kind of discrepancy there or disparity there. Um, but that said, I'm really, I'm really excited for this Ben Bateman, Mike Kalinowski matchup, which I think Me I feel too. like is going to headline next week's Titan, right? So we're setting that up. Yeah, um, this is what I want to happen. If I was an art director. This is how I need the walk-in to be. <laughs> ben come, Ben's there. Then you have Mike and Shannon come in. Shannon looking hot as ever. Just like sexy every step <laughs> she takes. She's eating up the room. And Mike has a rose in his hand. He twirls her, dips her. Or no, no, the rose is in his mouth. Better yet. Twirls her, dips her. Drops the rose from his mouth to her mouth and then seals it up with a kiss. And then she like takes out the rose, looks at Ben. You could never something like that. <laughs> something like that. I love that we're, you're just and, writing Schmodown fanfic right now and I'm yeah. totally here for it. Like yeah. we need we need we need more Schmodown fanfic out there. Someone should someone I would have loved to hear other people's takes yeah. on how they want yeah. what, do you how want? They want this. what do you want to see? I wanna I want a book, I just like a Schmodown fanfic book of <laughs> that would be wild. That would be yes. wild. Yes. <laughs> All right, so um we got this other scene, you know, leading up to or preceding um, the main event here with the system and the movement. And with the system, like I said, Janine the Machine is now in the dungeon with Kaiser and Smets, and her new teammate is the database, Eric Chan. You know, I think a lot of the the audience knows of Eric Chan. He's always in the live chat, you know, for matches. So he's kind of he's pretty well known in, in that area. And I think right now as he plays more, I think a lot more people will um you know, warm up to to the database and and what he brings to the table, but you know they were like this. You know he kind of needs a look. He need and so we got what we got kind of like a uh, what do you call it a a makeover scene, right? And zero uh, they had a to different, hero. Yeah, zero to hero or zero to the one really is what, what ended up happening. Yeah. Um, but what do you think of of this kind of the chemistry that you saw between Kaiser? Smats, Janine, and database. Is that is that is this was this a good team building moment? Oh my gosh. This is one of my favorite scenes yet. By the way, I haven't said this, but the scenes keep getting better and better yes. every week. They're so good. But this scene, as a fashion lover myself and as a person who loves to make over people, I am so in love with what happened. Like she was like, listen. You play like a champion, you got to look like a champion, baby boy. We need to change up the look, which is such a boss move by her. And then I love that Smith and Kaiser were there to watch it all happen and yeah. give their advice on it. I loved this and, and ultimately ended up on a great look. Though I did like the fencing outfit. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. Um, although kind of, kind of bold to go with the hoodie at one point because it's like, come on, you're not going to. It, that's yeah, but, kind that was of funny. but it was funny. Also, yeah. can I just say, 
the the red plaid shirt, the hat, and the bow tie Kaiser was wearing, I think he should he should wear that more often. Yeah, it was a good look. Yeah, good right? Look. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I love that. That's it. the only compliment I'm going to give Kaiser this episode. <laughs> um, all right, let's get into uh, our our undercard match, Pure Energy, and the next chapter. Uh, this one, interesting pairings for both sides. Interesting match. That's it was there was there was definite energy there. Uh, no pun intended for with pure energy. Um, and it was interesting to see Moose Hawes move from inner geekdom into the team's division. Um, and he played great. He had a perfect first round. Uh, Rachel Silvestrini also had a very strong first round with nine points. Uh, but looking at pure energy, what's interesting about their dynamic stuff is that. You know they're still fairly new to the showdown. I know Moose Haas is, but he's been playing a lot. Silverstein has played a lot in the past. Rick Hong, we haven't seen him in quite a while. I think the last time we saw him, he was paired up with uh, Video Drew. Uh, Beth had only played in singles the year prior, so it's been a while since, for at least for Rick, to play in the team's division. First time for Beth to play in the team's division, and they're going up against. Rachel Silvestrini, who's been around for a while, Moose Haas, who's no slouch. I think you know you just watch the Intergeek the matches, and you just watch them in this match. It was an interesting matchup. Um, what did you think of the first round for both of these teams, Steph? Yeah, I like this matchup a lot. We saw Rick Hong in the FCL, which was great, yeah, but not in. We didn't do teams, so it was cool to see them together. I was telling Frankie before we started. I loved when Beth was like. Am I shaking because of nerves, <laughs> yeah. caffeine, or am I starving for this match? And it's just like, yes, you weirdos. I love you two <laughs> together, like howling at the wind. And then them in round two getting animals and movies, which I forgot about, babe. That is yeah. such a classic. Ugh. I didn't know it was nominated that many times. That's what I'm saying. I'm like, really? <laughs> I was like, Phew. What? I Good didn't for know babe. I was Good for babe. Classic when I was younger, like a mere tyke, but yeah, it was a banger. So uh, this matchup was great. I, I it was cool to see these players and these teams come together that I hadn't seen before, and I thought it was just a really fun match. Honestly, like they there wasn't a bunch of like crap talking to one another they were just yeah. having fun with each other and just a good reminder about what the schmodown is about yeah and as we moved into the second round i really felt like the experience really came into play because if you looked at how silvestrini and moose haas would confer very starkly different than how rick hong and beth may would work were working together it almost seemed they're 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 still working out, you know, the kinks there, but it kind of seemed a little disjointed. So I felt like Silvestrini and Haas really had more of the advantage in that round. And even still, uh, we, you know, we talk about talking animals in movies. You know, that's what Pure Energy got. They took the wild card slice, and I felt like just based on like visuals alone, it looked like Beth took more of a charge in terms of um, that. In terms of that round. Um, and they didn't miss any questions. They only checked down twice. And so they got a total yeah. of eight points uh, on their turn. And then they were actually able to get a steal uh, off of um, next chapter when they were up. So I thought there was um, a foundation for um, for improvement and, and for better gameplay in the future. Because I think, again, the experience there... Um, was a factor you look at next chapter you know they ended up with what was it nicole kidman and you know they ended up missing one which was stolen on but the way they were working together i thought um was an indication of how good a team that they could be whereas when you look at pure energy they're still working out the kinks and i think it's due to the frequency in which they lack of playing matches and and actually and just even playing together because that's their first time yes moose haas and rachel silvestrini um, that was the first time playing together, but there's experience there, or at least recent experience, and a lot of it yeah. between Haas and Silver Street. So I think that counts for something. Um, but overall, I had a really great time watching this match. And there was one key moment, one particular moment, I should say, Steph, when you know we were talking about this before the show. Um, it was the it was Beth's um, musicians in film question basically asking you know phil collins you know what movie was he in blah, blah, blah. i forget the exact wording but it was the answer was hook and with steven spielberg film blah 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 and she you know when you when we, we always encourage players to just throw out something because you never know 
right? And we don't like to see players, you know, leave a blank board or just say, I don't know. You know, throw out something. Throw out anything. And Beth really took that to heart because she ended up saying Schindler's List, <laughs> um, which really kind of just brought down the house in the studio and – just, Everyone went like, silent and then lost it. Yeah, because it's so it's such an unpredictable guess. I mean, because I think I think a lot of people in the room knew that answer, and I think you know there's a good chunk of people who didn't know it. I was one of them. I couldn't in that moment in the 15 seconds I couldn't rack my brain. But because Phil Collins, the singer, was in her. Yes, yes, yeah. I want to know. Can you show that Phil Collins? That's that's that Phil. Phil Collins, I talk about this way too often and not enough, went way too hard at the paint for an animated Tarzan movie. <laughs> it's great. Like, that whole movie is what it is because of Phil Collins. <laughs> I mean, I, I got to agree. I got to agree. Yeah. Um, but that, that moment, I think, it's got to be up there for, like, I would just, I would just throw up there for guess of the year, even though it's not – Incorrect guess of the year. Yeah, just incorrect based guess on the, of the year. In, incredible. Um, so I, I good. Mean, unfortunately, you know they couldn't uh, pull out the the five pointer uh, to throw it back to next chapter and see what they could do in that in that final round. But you know, looking at the numbers here for Pure Energy, there were twenty two out of twenty nine. That's about seventy six percent correct. Not bad for a debuting team who've two two players who've never really. Work together, and then you have next chapter. They were twenty-four out of twenty-six because Moose was perfect in the first round. Rachel had a great first round, uh, only gave up that one miss in the second round. So that's ninety-two percent accuracy rate for them. Um, I, I'm curious to see what what happens in another match for them, the next chapter that is, uh, because I think they have a great starting point here. But they weren't really tested in the final round, and that's where teams are really you know can start to build momentum in terms of. Um, chemistry and figuring out okay who should take this category and this question or what have you so I'm looking forward to seeing more from next chapter and I'll be curious to see if Pure Energy gets another shot you know what their next performance looks like Steph you know when you look at the match in total what's your biggest takeaway here my biggest takeaway is that I'm excited to see what Pure Energy does but I think that because I think that they have a lot of potential and they're funny. And I, like, I think about teams like the pair up between JTE and the Paul Preston and they're funny and they end up working, you know, they have like a lot of knowledge. So if they can tap into that knowledge side even more, so that would be great. Uh, Moose and Rachel Sh Silvestrini, I think have a lot of potential together, especially like watching their first round together. It was really, really great. And then they like continued down that way so it would be cool to see how they are against other people other teams definitely definitely and i mean yeah i'll say it again next chapter is something that i'm gonna you know when i hear they're in, an, in, a, in a, when i hear they get another match i'm gonna be interested to see what the outcome of that one is and, yeah. and who they play because you know rachel said hey we're, we're game for anybody and right now as we're kind of watching the team's division build out you know we're starting to see you know teams like the appointment coast to coast uh, the system, the movement, right? Which we're going to talk to uh, Paul Preston here in a bit. Um, seeing all these teams kind of come together and, and building. And next chapter, I think, is kind of also just toss their hands into the ring and saying, hey, don't forget about us. You know, we, we can make some noise too. And so that's really uh, exciting. Along with uh, Ruling Class and a few other teams out there, um, will be interesting to see what next chapter can do and who they play against and what they do mm -hmm. against them. So... Um, with all that said, let's go ahead and move on to the the main event. But we're going to talk to Paul Preston, the Paul Preston right now. And we're going to talk to him right now. Here we go. Hey, Paul. Uh, nice book, uh, Understanding Movies. Uh, is, that a, is that a page turner there? Uh, yeah, Frank, I'm uh, in the schmodown. Okay, I need to know what movies are all about. I know you can sit there in your, looks like a Motel 6 and... Uh, you know, watch a bunch of, you know, Netflix shows. I got to learn about movies, man. So, yeah, I'm sitting, I don't spend my time goofing around. You don't get to 2-0 and o by not practicing all the time and trying to get better. Yeah, well, um, you know, let's let's talk about this match you had against the system, Janine, the machine, and the database. Uh, you know, you, you had to be pretty, I guess, 
on on your on your toes here because their debut match they looked really good, but you and JTE looked really good as well. What was it like preparing for Janine the Machine? Who there's there's a lot of tape on you know on her play, but then you have this newbie, this the database. There's not a whole lot out there. How did you approach um, you know this team coming into the match? I said, I didn't want to tell you what matters most is whether you're going to win or lose to yourself. Okay, so I just got to go out there and play my best game. We're going to beat them, and they're going to lose because uh, they can't, you know, they lose against themselves, if you know what I mean. And it turns out in the end, they're young. They're young, Frank. They didn't answer the 70s question right. They didn't know Tommy was the uh, uh, rock opera by the who. They didn't know way back in 1986 when T.H.E. was working at the movie theaters as a young pup. You know, I was I watched the three amigos a bazillion times. They didn't know it because they, they they're young. Right. Sure. I'm going to die sooner, but it helps me a lot in the schmodown. <laughs> and I looked at our stats. You know, I wrote stuff down when I was watching that match. Oh, yeah. Eight, 81 percent accuracy, 77 or 78 percent PPE, personal yeah. protection equipment or something. That's exactly the same for the system and the movement. So this came down to just the, play your best game and it's going to be a tie game. Slip up. You're done. They slipped up. That's it. Frankie, were you just double checking those stats? Yeah, I was. I was looking. You see how the crowd? I saw you. I saw you like. You it's like, is that, that that tracks? Okay, all right. He's done his homework. You know. Yeah. And, well, you uh, put, I watched it. It's on YouTube. Yeah. No, you're you're not wrong, and I feel like you're you are aging like fine wine. You're getting wiser throughout the years. I can respect that. It was cool in this episode. We got to kind of see like the evolution. They had some flashbacks of the coming together of you two as a union and i'm just curious from like now you're two and oh together you're clearly doing great you're wildly entertaining at least for me how's it feeling are you guys like are you guys getting better throughout the weeks or have you guys kind of known since that first initial match that you guys could do this oh since the first initial match i mean look look you want to talk about stats i got i got them around here somewhere let's see i want right. to see I'm going with your stats there, Frankie, numbers that you put up on uh, the Schmodown live page. By the way, update that, will you? There's nothing in there from 2022. Get on the ball. I don't know what, again, I don't well, know what you're doing. You're, you're at a convention or something in that motel room. Look, get on the, the, the thing, update everything so people know what everybody's doing. But right now, it's the end of 2021. In a team's percentage, I'm number one all time in individual accuracy in a team's match 91%. Plus, Three perfect rounds in eight matches and bonus question two out of three times. Only Griffey Newman has a higher percentage, but the guy's played fewer games, right? And he, he's only played one by the time this whole uh, thing was taken. You know, update it and we'll see what happens. Chances are I only get better. I, I got to say, I got to say, Steph, uh, this might be the best guest we've ever had. I mean, he comes well prepared. He's got yeah. the numbers. I mean... I better I better look over my shoulder. You might take my job, but I, that's probably I feel not. Like you're your own attorney training. right now. I, <laughs> I know He's I'm like arguing for and against myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Paul. Um, Wait, um, let me finish just answering that, that question too, because yeah. like Rachel finished her match, and then they were like, "Hey, you were great," and he's like, "This is my third team. This is my fourth. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Adam Wick clearly found his role as a manager. So my first year when I was here with, with him, we pushed Shazam to the limits you and did. showed them what a great team, team they could be. They took off and are a great team. And then Tom didn't work out. Ben Goddard didn't work out. JTE is the guy I'm supposed to be with. I knew that from the minute we got our first match together, and that's how we're moving forward. Nothing but winning. Yeah, because prior to these two matches, you had no wins in the team's division. You know, yeah. you, you reference – you know your past teammates but namely you came into this this league with adam witt and now he's transitioned over to a managerial role and specifically now your manager along with jte uh first of all talk to me about getting that first win in the team's division i mean they had to be like a monkey off your back absolutely yeah i mean this was something that jte's used to so you know he was probably comfortable with it <laughs> and, you know, and me, I all new to me. So this is exciting. And I know what it's like. I mean, over in the singles division, I'm batting 500. So I know what it's like to win. But the teams, that was killing me. So, yeah, I'm happy to be, you know, winning finally, you know, in that. So definitely, uh, definitely a monkey up there. And by the way, speaking of Adam Witt and his managerial skills, I'm glad you redid that opening to the Friday Night Titans, whoever over there is doing all the editing, because Adam's finally represented. I've watched, you know, a dozen or so episodes of this show, no Adam Witt in the opening credits. I'm like, you're talking about one of the most electrifying managers in the league. You can't you can't leave him out. So it's good to see him there. And I'm excited. And by the way, speaking of that, in that song, you know, when the guy goes, You're in the way, it's my line. 
play my wow. music. You're in wow. the way. So I'm happy to be represented there, and I'm happy Adam's in the thing because we're going to define this league, so you need to have us up front in the credits. Who's in the way for you now? Well, listen, I need to get myself a single match, but outside of that, in the teams, well, who's out there that uh, is winning? Oh, they mentioned Coast to Coast in my post-interview with the Jen. Yeah, I, I hadn't heard of those guys. Since then, I, I looked up who they are. Turns out they're the sophomore slumps, right? Uh, Collins and Oyama. And we'll see what they're like in their junior year. But chances are, you know, more of the same. And we could probably take those guys as well. well JTE's I mean, beat Collins before, so why not beat him again? I mean, that that is true. But, I mean, I understand, you know, the, the sophomore slump. But do you understand where they slumped from, you know, winning a title? Um, and so they're, they are proven commodities in the Schmodown. So Team's title? I, well, individual singles. But, you know, not now they've combined title. forces, you know. Yeah, but not so, a team's title, Frank. So I mean, get your stats right. This may be why you took a break from stats. I get it. <laughs> I'll speak to that later. But, uh, you know, when you look at the, the pairing of Paul Oyama and Adam Collins, yes, JT has beaten Adam Collins last year in a match. But you look at, you know, them working together in their matches against Appointment um, and even against the Real Rejects. Um, you know, this is a team potentially down the line that you could face. You know, all these new teams are forming, right, this year and kind of rebuilding this team's division. You know, there's obviously ruling classes out there still uh, with Ty Whitney. They look pretty formidable as well. Um, when you look at all these new teams, um, where do you think the movement sits in the hierarchy right now? Uh, we sit on the throne. I mean, the movement sits on the throne. I mean, I think that's something we've put together for a long time. I mean, you're not going to get a movement. You know, without somebody sitting on the throne. <laughs> Listen, JTE beat Collins. Did I see Oyama sitting there with Marisol McKee at the end of the free for all? I could take him. JTE can take Collins. This is a fine matchup. We're going to do great. I think we got the championship on our sights and nothing's going to derail us. I'm glad you mentioned Marisol because I do want to get to that free for all a little bit later. But, you know, this match that you are in with Janine and and the database you know i, I want to ask you about this billy bob thornton challenge and uh, it seemed to really grind your gears both you and jte and and adam witt what was it like to hear hey we have a challenge and it's because he didn't put the n in billy bob thornton now listen i want to share you something that i realized watching this neither did janine but these are the uh, things we can't rewind, you know? What are you going to do? So for me, I get the idea. Wow, that you need... you, are you an attorney? Visual aids. Listen, and who's doing that? Let's, let's, not, not only that, but uh, she might have also thought the dark world was one word. But hey, what are you going to do? <laughs> Listen, I'm not, not that I have anything to say about it. She clearly knew who Billy Bob Thornton was. So did I. So did JTE. So did yeah. the database. Let's move on. I'm not here to play police, all right? If you want me to show up and be the be the police and, and all these things, I got a match to play. I got movie trivia to worry about. So, you know, that was frustrating because, yeah, JTE mentioned it. It could happen a lot with him. <laughs> but I think, uh, you know, we get focused, we get our heads on straight, and, the, and nothing's going to get in our way in that respect. My God, that was uh, – you really are great at trivia, but I think you're a better attorney. You've come with exhibits, evidence – um, stats. I'm fully convinced that you are really capable of more than just movements on the throne. Oh. But you want stats? What's All that? right. Steph, uh -oh, here we stats. go. Here okay, are the here stats on the Schmodown rundown. Okay. Okay. You ready? Oh, no. Here are I, don't, the stats I don't like this. Rundown. <laughs> oh, At shit. SD Rundown has 1,830 followers on Twitter. That's 2,578 fewer than the movie guys. But uh, of the 1,830 followers, 1,500 of them are bots from the Philippines. So that's just something that. Uh, I think well, uh, where'd you, it's paid for. I don't know. We're, we're big in the Philippines. I don't know what money. to tell you. We're big in where the Philippines. Where did you get that? This is something that, listen, the, the, the way I get access Brad Gilmore's book funds and find oh. out what he does with them is nothing I can share in the air. Uh, of this uh, at SD rundown, 1,419 tweets. 1,100 of them are about uh, Brad Gilmore's hair. This is a fact. This is just what is Science. the stats. Uh, and that four, is something we do need to address. He has too much access to that account. You have 422 yeah. episodes on YouTube writing the coattails of the TMS page. Uh, used to be the Schmo, the, used to be the Schmodown Rundown. Why are you afraid of the word the? 
Well, you, you, you know the rules this year, right? <laughs> Do you know the rules this year? You don't really need to say the, the you know this you know, this year. Well, you say that. I say that. You say that. Um, Check out uh, the rundown, and then I wanted to remind everybody to check out the Rundown's Facebook page too, where you can respond to their most int- uh, most recent post, which was su- September first, two thousand twenty-one. Anyway, great. Uh, get excited and get interactive with the rundown, like I'm doing. It's fun. Yeah, that's, that's great. I really need that rundown for the rundown. Um, much well, listen, much appreciated. To, to address your question, Steph. Yeah, I could go into stats. I suppose. I mean, this stuff isn't paying. Uh, the real rejects. You know, uh, they're apparently getting paid. I don't even know how that happened. But um, listen, I, my only demand so far has been that I, the Schmodown shoot me from a low angle, and they're not doing that. So I, That's they, ridiculous. Who's like, to say I can get money? Why wouldn't they listen to that? That's what the people want. Right. Them being Low to me. high angle. Yeah. I'll file but, a complaint for you. But I do appreciate a May 18th retweet that says uh, this was uh, regarding Adam Witt's announcement. Uh, at the beginning of one of your episodes. Yeah. Yes, right at the top, because that's where the fan favorites belong. The top. Hey, you got our back in that, despite, uh, you know, some other comments I've heard coming out of the rundown. Well, you know, once in a while, we, we toss a bone out there. Um, you know, T-H-E, I mean, isn't that kind of, I want to ask you, because isn't it, I mean, it, I guess, is that more of a compl- compliment towards JTE to kind of riff off of that? And like, how did JTE feel about T H E and G A T E. Was that was that something that that was like, this is what we need for team synergy? Is that what that's all about? Listen, it's something I I realized after that. You know, I showed you my I told you about my stats, right? Listen, yeah, yeah. singles percentage same as Merle. Uh, with okay. uh, four. Listen, I got uh, overall. I got overall. Wait a second here. I got another one. I have the uh, top ten all time in PPE percentage, and I don't even know what that means. <laughs> I've got uh, top 10 all-time points average. Look, all these things were telling me that I needed to change things up a bit. And so if you don't call me Paul Preston, I'm the Paul Preston. I got the stats to prove it, all right? And so I was coming into the league as T-H-E. Just so happens I'm with J-T-E, and there you go. We have a perfect uh, synergy. T-H-E and J-T-E going going all the way to the T-O-P. Wow, a lot of... Per your your tweet. Yeah, that's... A lot of three-letter things going no, on. No, it'd be there. a good thing. You should post on the Facebook after a year saying t- and quote that, T-H-E-J-T-E going to the T-O-P. No, nobody goes to your Facebook. It's fine. It's fine. Oh. No, 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 the, the Schmodown's Facebook. I mean, you know, the Schmodown, no. you know. If not ours, then then, then the Schmodown's. It's just, I got know. the numbers. I got the numbers. That's Frank, you should respect. The MTS, the T-H-E into the M-T-S, going to the T-O-P. You know me, all that. Yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, now, T A G, Paul Preston. Um, this 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 match. I mean, when you play a match, you've only played two with J T E. What is it like um, finding your chemistry with with a with one of the most legendary team players um, in J T E, Little Evil? Um, what's it like trying to find that chemistry to? Um, I guess, in a sense, replicate some of his past um, achievements and winning the team's title. Is there any kind of um, thought about you got to live up to his previous partner in Jeff Snyder because you know they won titles as the Patriots? Did you compare yourself uh, to a one in Snyder, mm-hmm. Jeff Snyder, and, and the run that they have, and seeing that you know you want to win up that and make sure that you know you are um, in JTE's eyes worthy of being his teammate? Yeah, you're right. I, I didn't even think of that, to be honest with you. I didn't think about Snyder at all. Hmm. Yeah, you're right. That is something that they did accomplish a lot. I thought about what I needed. I thought about what was best for me. And I know when I come into contact with whoever's going to be best for me, I'm also going to compliment them. And that seems to be what's going on. I mean, the we those conversations we have, a lot of times we're talking about how horrible you know, Mark Ellis is dressed. You know, mm-hmm. when I ask a question and we confer, but... We're also kicking around questions. Turns out he knows some stuff. I know some stuff. We're complimenting each other really well, which is interesting because a lot of times on paper, you know, some of these combinations seem great. Like I've been paired with a young guy before. Oh, good. He'll know the young stuff. I'll know, you know, the, the classic stuff together. We'll be, no. JTE and I are great pair because we both just know a lot. So that's how we'll win. 
knowing well, a lot. Take notice, rest of the league. Yeah, you gotta know not, they know. I, yeah, I'm not weak on this, and he's smart. On this. Yeah, we're strong on all of it. Bring, bring it. Listen, yeah. pull out the Judith Light slice. We'll answer all those. We'll get eight points on that. Doesn't matter. I mean, is I mean, I know you say you, you both have strains that you know, but is there anything that 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 your knowledge set complements his knowledge set, and where there might be a little bit of um, you know, a gap in knowledge in terms of a certain genre or director, or are there any, you know, um, any, I guess, gaps that, um, you guys, we are filling in for each other. Yeah. I was trying to avoid the wording because I felt like I was gonna lead you down into a joke and then throw it back in my face. And joke. I feel like that's like, none of this is a joke. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Listen, I'm horrible at romantic comedies. All right. No, I'm okay. not. Why would I say that? Why would I say that? I'm not horrible <laughs> romantic comedies. Come on. Well, I'm not. I'm not asking you to tell specific. you all my weaknesses. I'm not. Well, I mean, you know, I'm what not just asking here? you to be specific. We're just saying, is there, is there, you know, is you like, hey, this actually works out because I don't know as much about director B and, and JTE does. This works out well. Is, does that happen, or is it just you guys know a lot about the same stuff? That's yeah, what I'm. That's interested what I'm in. saying. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Now, much to your disappointment, Frank, we're not filling each, in each other's gaps. All right. We both just know a lot. I'll repeat it. We both know a lot. And if you're preparing for us, that's what you need to prepare. They know a lot. All right. All right. <laughs> Steph, I mean, they know a lot. They know a lot. Yeah. They don't. They do clearly. You guys did really great in this last match against the machine, and you, I. I was curious well, because you went perfect in round one. You guys had a great round two minus missing that last one. But then going into round three, that's when you were tied up. I know in the earlier before when you knew who you guys were going up against, there was kind of like, well, we wanted someone like a little bit easier. Obviously, these two had a really impressive opening. But you've also said today that you no team makes you nervous. Did they at all during the match, before the match? I mean, we clearly we found ourselves tied at one point. So, yeah, I have to take that seriously. And, uh, you know, we did. But, uh, w again, what can we do? Just answer all the questions. And we will because we know yeah. a lot. Listen, you can and you can throw all the rules you want at us. The last action hero, Billy Bob Thornton, whatever. Don't bring the rules. All right. Bring game. That's what it's going to take. All right. Okay. Well, there you go. I like that's that's pretty good. That's a pretty good sound bite. They should throw that in a promo. He's had a few today. You know? Yeah. <laughs> just talking to you guys. We're just we're just chatting. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah, we're just chatting. We're just chatting. Yeah, yeah. Um but now earlier on I I, I want to put a pin in this Marisol uh thing because you found yourself at the end of free for all, you know, one v one against Marisol McKee, a former singles champion. Um what was it like to be up there? As the final two, you know, it's the free for all, you would have a shot at any any title that you would want if if you were to be victorious um obviously unfortunately for you that was not the case but what was it like to go through all those rounds and get to that final two and be oh so close and and just barely miss out on that what i mean what was that experience like the playing the free for all at that at that stage well listen i came in and knocked ben bateman out then i knocked merle out you know and and so already but look i'm not surprised by this Somehow I just keep getting, you know, underestimated, you know, it's like, uh, here, stats. Yeah, here we I'm go. currently here playing we go. 500 ball in singles. All right. I'm four and yeah. four. Yet I'm ranked Frank below McQueenie, who has a losing record. Frank, I don't do the, I don't do the ring. Is it because he has more wins despite the losing record? Why is Ty Lieberman ranked higher than me? Who only has two wins. Frank. Come on, I'm ranked below Jader Perello, right. who is also 500, but has no KOs. I have the same record as David Del Rio. He's in the top 10. Listen, this makes no sense. This is disrespect. In the offseason, I noted it, and I, you know, and I made sure that that was going to change this year. So I know the last two years, I crapped the bed. You know that thing in golf where um, everything sucked, and uh, you don't know uh, what to blame it on, so you sure. just uh, start over? Mulligan? That's what I had the last two years over on okay. the den. And so I'm done with that, and I'm on with Adam Witt. And already I think this this uh, free-for-all experience has shown what this new pairing can do. So it's a, it's a new – If you were people are always like, hey, he's good. Hey, he's all right. He, he, it's my Brad impersonation. But I 
I was this you proved it. Getting out there to the end. Now, is it rough when you know when the what are you going to do with the rankings, right? When you got the former belt holder, the most recent belt holder before Sam jumping in right before the end, just having to stick around for a couple of you know rounds and then win. Yeah, what are you going to do? I was in there hustling and you know fighting and keeping it going and trying to get as get this as exciting and stick around as long as I can. I think I did pretty damn good. So, uh, yeah, it was fun, but certainly disappointing, right? That uh, missed one question and then I was out. But uh, that's how it's. That's how. how it's, thank you for bringing up such a painful subject, Frank. I like to cover all areas, Paul. You know, just gotta. You yeah. know, Do you cross think the T's and dot the I's? The stats obviously aren't lying, which is why I appreciate your backing this up with numbers and real facts here. Do you think that you're still considered underrated? You should be given more credit for what you've done and what you can do. Yes, people underestimate the movement. You know, they think the movement, they liken it to taking the Browns to the Super Bowl, right? Hmm. And that's a, a long shot, but we're here yeah. for it. You know, I have, I have one last question. It might be the most important question Go ahead. Um, oh, that you'll no. probably ever be asked and that yeah. I'll ever ask is how do you and JTE, you know, how did you coordinate your get up, you know, the, the, you got the jacket, you know, he's got a cane, he's wearing chains, you know, how did you guys come up with this look? I mean, was it you just rolled out of bed and that's what it looks like? Or did you guys go to the wardrobe and have yourselves, you know, figure out how you want to present yourself? Because I got to tell you, I'm actually kind of digging the look. So oh, it's, a, it's so good. Yeah, my, uh, my aviator, my red aviator glasses aren't readers. So you get these uh -huh. for now. But otherwise, yeah, I just want to look sharp. You know, maybe a little intimidating, too. You know, there's someone already called it kind of a Tyler Durden look. I'll take that. He was a mystery. He didn't know what he was all about. He was hiding in the shadows, kind of mastering everything, right, when you didn't know who he was. Yeah. So I like to think that's me. And now as for uh, JTE, you know, I think everything you talked about him doing with the team's championship belt, guy's a pimp, and now he's showing it. Look good, feel good, play good, I guess. I think that's yeah. how it goes. Yeah, I mean, I could get out there and just look like a regular person and be as bland as the blue walls we play in front of, but that's not me, all right? I wanted to get out there and then, you know, sometimes that stuff works from outside in. You've heard about actors. They, they put on the clothes and then they suddenly know that they're the character despite all the rehearsals going on and the thing. So I was sitting there going, I know all this stuff about movies. Let me just kind of live in a movie vibe and see what happens. And sure enough, yeah, this is this is a good fit. So I'm liking this. Liking it too. Phenomenal, phenomenal. Uh, Paul, want to want to thank you for taking the time with uh, you know for being here with us and answering all these questions and giving us the numbers. I love that. I love that. And yeah. uh, you know, I mean, we brought you here for an interview, and instead we got a, we got an audit really at the end of the day. But nonetheless, I yeah. enjoyed I enjoyed I enjoyed I enjoyed having you on the show. That was fun, uh, you know, doing this as well. Uh, Steph, I, we haven't talked much, so this is exciting. You know, maybe I'll see you in one of those post-match wins that we have coming up. And Frank, uh, you know, whenever you get back in town, look me up. Sure. I, I'm, I mean, I'm in town now, but I yeah, I'll look you up when I get back in town. <laughs> oh, I keep thinking you're in a hotel. Yeah. That's all right. Yeah, yeah that's true. Happens, okay. Frank. Anyway, right, no, that... thanks for having me on. You know, listen, the last time uh, that uh, we were in a match at the Schmodown, the, the movement, we had a, you know, 34,000 people tune in to check us out and see what was going on. So they were right to make us a headliner again. I think that's going to help the views on this last Friday Night Titans, and I think it's going to help the views on this very rundown right here, and I look forward to coming back again if you ever need a bump. Absolutely. Wow. That is the Paul Preston from the movement, one half of the movement, uh, pairing with JTE. And uh, good luck the rest of the way. Thanks. Hitting he's the back. books he's, again. He's back to understanding movies again. Okay. He's still here, stuff. But like, interest. I wanted to see what the turn paging technique was. Yeah, you know what the Odessa older? steps are. Come on. <laughs> you know the Odessa steps. I, I don't. I like. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Oh, We're gonna get off the air. Our audit's not gonna pass. He's not gonna <laughs> yeah. pass us. He's not gonna yeah. pass. That's all right. Listen, while I'm still on here, let me tell you one last yeah. thing you gotta do. Okay? okay, go to your Twitter page where it says airing Mondays at 10 a.m. All right, 
Yeah. Mondays shouldn't have an asterisk. That's a possessive. Frank, come on. How are we going to let this happen? I don't even, I don't even think that's, that's I don't real. Do, I don't, I don't do even think that's real. Come on. Is that, is that real? Is that, I got I to gotta double check. This, I gotta this double guy's check. telling us more about us than we know about us. How's that going to be? Huh. Look at that. It must have been, must have been uh, auto, auto correct, probably. Auto, <sighs> auto correct strikes yeah, again. Yeah, auto, auto would correct it, Frank. I gotta update the software probably. Okay, the update software it. gotta be updated. By it's not. It's that's not. I'm just. I just checked it right now. It doesn't say that. It doesn't say that. Yeah, yeah it did. But now it doesn't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, stuff. We finally got rid of him. Uh, interesting way to to. I don't think we've ever ended an interview that way where the guests just stayed there. Um, to show their work, he was like, "Yeah, I'm yeah. just gonna continue on. You continue on as well." Yeah, and uh, I didn't really know what to do, um, <laughs> but eventually he did leave. Which you know, he's got you know, he's got to understand other movies. Um, yeah. But what I will say real quick as we wrap uh, as we wrap up this episode here, um, the movement. I don't. There's something about JTE and the team's division. I don't know what it is. This yeah. guy just does not lose. He's only lost a few matches in his entire team division history, right? So that seems to. And now he's got Paul Preston, who look he references numbers. He's always played. He's always played great. He just always came out the opposite end uh, of you know on, on the losing side of things. Unfortunately for him, he got in tough tough matches and it just didn't go his way. And you know his his showing at free for all, um, these two matches he's had with JTE as his teammate, and they're winning. You know I'm really interested to see what they could do if they play Costa Costa, if they play someone like the ruling class. Um, you know uh, this team could be could be sneaky dangerous because obviously teams like the appointment with Ethan Irwin, you know, and Costa Coast uh, with. With with Paul Oyama and Adam Collins, like you know, those are these are big names, and we'll see who uh, Mike Kalinowski ends up teaming with, you know, and 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 what have you, or who Marisol ends up teaming with, right? So there's all these other players out there looming that could form teams that could give a run for any team out there, run for their money. But JTE and Paul Preston, I mean, JTE dragged Finstock way back in 2015 to a title match against. Uh, the schmoes that was Christian and Mark way back in the day. If JT can drag Finstock that far in a tournament, I don't care what era it was. If he can do that, he can probably do great things with Paul Preston, and uh, I think just time will tell. Yeah, definitely. I think something that really plays to their benefit is that they're not only really good and know a lot of trivia, they're distracting. <laughs> I yeah. feel like teams have got to get distracted by them in a way that I don't think other teams are as distracting. Like they're just always doing something weird. Yeah, they're, they're they do have this weird kind of. It, it's like the circus comes to town whenever they enter the match. There's literally like with his three things. Jig, whether like, it's yeah, whether it's Adam Witt doing his thing, you got T H E, you know. Taking his, the whiteboard, punting it on the table. He got JTE missing consonants and, and misspelling and pronunciations. I mean, there's so much going on with the movement. And then, but also, yeah, they also know their stuff. So you better pay attention, or you could get if you get caught sleeping, you know, they're gonna pull a dub on you. So uh, again, I'm real interested to see what the movement can do. But they got to keep winning this, this team's division. While it it may appear thin right now, I think. Of a hand, there's a handful of teams that are, are going to be really good, and I think the movement's going to be in that in that bunch. But time will tell whether or not you know they can make their way to a number contender shot, and hey, maybe even uh, an actual title shot. So looking forward to seeing what they could do. Um, and I think you know, given how this whole episode went with Ben Bateman, these matches, uh, specifically the movement coming out on top in their match. I'm really interested to see, not interested, but I'm curious to see how it all all um, unfolds, especially next week when I think we're going to get that Mike Kalinowski-Ben Bateman match. I'm going to ask you for a prediction here, Steph. Bateman or Kalinowski, who are you going to go with? Do you th- will the mind games matter? Will it backfire? Will it work? What say you? I'm going to go with Kalinowski. 
Is that, is that your heart or is that your head? It's my head because I think that he has less to lose mm-hmm. right now where he is. And that's kind of a scary position to be in. And I think that he also has more fuel right now. And that's like, I feel like, that could work to Ben's benefit, but that could not. Like you've just put a fire under someone in a way that you haven't seen all season. And so we'll see if that plays to his favor. But I think I think he's gonna win. I don't know. What do you think? I I want Ben to lose so bad. I want him to lose so bad. I want Mike to win. I want I want Mike to take Bateman down a couple pegs. That being said, I still think Ben. <laughs> I still think Ben's gonna win, but I want him to lose so bad. Yeah, I want him to lose so bad, just because I, I just, I just want it to blow up in his face. Yeah, and he's doing all this stuff. And I just want it to blow up in his face, and I want him to see that it doesn't work. Because what I'm afraid of is he's gonna win, and he's gonna be like, "Hey, what I'm doing, all this uh, extra stuff, it's working. I'm gonna keep doing it, and I don't want that because that should never, that should never be the takeaway." You know, it's because he's going to win. Bateman's going to win because at the end of the day, if he wins, at the end of the day, he's, he's going to be the better player. He's going to know more on that day. It's not because of all the antics, but that's yeah. what he's going to take away from it, I feel like, if yeah. he wins. So that's why Mike needs to win, and, and I need Ben to lose. But unfortunately, yeah. I think, yeah, it's it's been said. This is Ben's division. This is his expertise. Mike Kalinowski, he is a three-division player. But this is the least of the three divisions for him. And I'm not saying he doesn't have a chance. I think I really think he does. And I think Ben knows that. And while in front of the cameras and everything like that, Ben will probably brush it off. But behind the scenes, I know Ben is taking Mike very seriously because it he can lose to him. He can't. And it would be devastating for his singles campaign. This year. Yeah. All right. I think... I think that's going to do it for for this episode, Steph. Anything, anything else we didn't cover? Anything, uh, you got no, any thoughts? Car opinions? alarm that's going off nonstop well, that's, outside that's, my building. That's great. Well, uh, um, with that said, I guess that's our cue to get out of here, you know? <laughs> no, yeah. All right. Good, another great episode. <laughs> All right. Next week, I think Brad should be back if we let him. Yeah, if he sends us the formal application, yeah, I, mean, I would say now that yeah. he's lost his job. I think, uh, yeah, he gotta re- re- he's got to re- uh, <laughs> He's got to resubmit, right? He resubmit his application for employment. Uh, yeah. we'll, we'll see what we can do. We'll see, you know. Yeah. We'll pull some strings, get him back on, on the rundown. All right. That's stuff, Sabra. I'm Frank Janish. This has been the Schmodown Rundown, and we will see you next week. 